start. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Today, I will present the result of the real-time model in Guantou. The contents of the talk includes the introduction of the real-time model, followed by the method which we applied in the real-time model. And then I will show the steps to how to implement the method in the real applications. And uh, then it will be the result what we obtained from the Guantou real-time model. And finally, is some uh, summary. First, uh, let's look at what is the real-time groundwater model. And uh, apparently, it is a groundwater model which is running based on the data what we collected in real time. So the real-time groundwater model included the data collection part due to this uh, remote transmit, uh, transmitting sensors. Nowadays, we are easily to collect all the data in real time, which are relevant for the development of the numerical model, like the groundwater level data, precipitation, pumping, da pumping data, or maybe the, also the electricity data. And we store the data in the database and of sorry. And then the model will call this data and use the new observations to update the numerical model. Of course, we can also visualize all these results online. The whole process will repeat it with the times. So the main part of the real-time model is to update the numerical model. And the method what we used here is called the data assimilation. So we have this numerical model. And for the models, we need the initial conditions and also the input forces, what is used to drive the numerical model to run. And from the model, we get the model forecast. And at the same time, so we also collect the data from the uh, real uh, aquifer systems. And uh, there's a deviation between the model forecast and the observations. So based on this, we will calibrate some numerical models. And this calibration process is different from what I introduced it last week. So this is a new way we need to use uh, to based on this uh, data assimilation algorithm to calibrate the model parameters and the state. And so now we come to see the definition of the data assimilation. It is a sequential dynamic process. So the, the model will be updated by assimilating the new observations. And uh, the whole uh, process included a dynamic model, which we are used to simulate our real aquifer systems, and also the input data, what is used to keep the model forward run. And also we need the observations data used to update the uh, numerical model. And of course, the important part, we also need the data assimilation algorithms that uh, we used to, to calibrate the model. And uh, the common data assimilation algori algorithms is the uh, Kalman filter. It used two steps. First is, first is the model forecast and followed by the model update steps. So the X minus T represents this model state, model uh, the forecast model state and time T it equals to a linear relationship between the model forecast at the previous time and plus this input forces, what we collected at the time t. And the updated model states equals to the forecast model states plus uh, this k is the Kalman gain matrix multiplied by this uh, observation data as to what we collected from the real system plus the measurement error minus this uh, transformation matrix plus, uh, based on this uh, forecast uh, model state. And this is part is what we, we transform the state space into the observation state. And so all the whole component in the bracket is different between the observations and the model calculations. And so during the updating process, the important part is this Kalman gain. And it equals to this uh, error covariance multiplied by this transformation matrix H. And also this, in this part also related with the error covariance matrix and uh, plus this measurement error covariance. And so here we could say that the common gain is 
really important. It try to um, balance the trust between the model and also the observations. So what does this mean? If we look at the common gain calculation equations, when we have a larger um, measurement error, let's assume that it's close to the infinity of large. So that means this part of the common gain equals to zero. So if we look at these equations, common gain is uh, close to zero, so we can neglect this part. That means the model, of, uh, the model uh, update of the states equals to the forecast of the states. That means we don't trust the observations, we only trust our model result. But when the, the measurement error equals to zero, that means we trust it, trust its uh, observations so much, there's no error in the observation data. So the common gain equals to the, it should be the inverse matrix of this H. So this is a larger. So normally this is the updating, this is the up or the correct data uh, magnitude is a number between zero and the K multiplied by, uh, and the inverse matrix of the H. And the, the, there's also a disadvantage of this um, uh, traditional common filter because it based on this uh, linear assumptions and they need to calculate this error covariance matrix P. So using this uh, explicit way. And uh, when the dimension of the models increase so much, and then the calculation of this error covariance, uh, covariance matrix becomes infeasible. And so that's the reason in the real applications that we introduce these ensemble common filters. It is a Monte Carlo data assimilation. That means that all the state parameters and also the input forces that are represented by a ensemble of so many rep, uh, realizations. And here you can see that the model forecast also equals to this uh, a trans, a transformation matrix of this uh, model state at the previous times and also the input forces collected at this time steps. But the M is not only the linear relation, it could be the nonlinear. Here, this is refers to our hydrological models. And the update process is the same, is also the uh, forecast plus a common gain multiplied by the difference between the observations and the calculations. And so here, the X not only included the model state, it also could include the parameters. It's up to the, to, to the, um, or to your purpose. If you want to only uh, update the model parameters, then the X only represents the parameters. But you want to only uh, interested in the model state, and then the X refer, uh, refers to the state matrix. And if you want to uh, update both, and so the X could also be this augmented uh, uh, matrix. That means we put the parameter and the states together in these X variables. And the good things for this ensemble common field that we don't uh, use this. Um, explicit way to calculate the error covariance matrix and we use the ensemble of the realizations to, to calculate the error covariance matrix. That means we use the statistics of the ensemble of realizations to represent the original statistics of the whole population. So it will make the, compu uh, the computation more fast. And the uh, most uh, um, Common example to apply the ensemble common filter is the weather forecast. And here we showed the weather forecast in Zurich between the 13th of November to the 19th of November. And the first row, this is the forecast what we made on the 10th of November. The second is the forecast based uh, made on the 11th. And then this is what we made the forecast on the November 12th. And the last row, this is the show this actual weather on the on that day, on the 13th and the 14th. And you could say that the forecast and the different day are really changed quite different. And you were wondering how could this happen? Because when we made the uh, when they made this weather forecast on the 10th, 
they only consider about the latest, what they collected before the tenth. But when we make the or uh, they make the forecast weather forecast on the eleventh of the November, they not only use the data before the tenth, they were also uh, assimilate the data they collected on the 10th of the November. So that's the reason based on this new data and they calibrated this uh, weather model and make another new forecast. So that's the reason the forecast result are different with, from the day before. And this is also the same from the next day uh, because we included the observations, not only 9th, also 10th and 11th. And so we based on these new data, that means we update the uh, models for another two times and then make this forecast. And if you compare this forecast with these actual weather on that day, you realize that the more uh, observations you assimilated, the more accurate the forecast. So that means the forecast you made on the 12th is more closest to the actual weather on the 13th and the 14th. So this also gave us a hint that the ensemble common filter could help the model to uh, to catch the real parameters or state and to improve the accuracy of the model forecast. And another example is about the waterworks in Zurich. And here, this is uh, waterworks, and this is the rivers of Lehman River, and the Zurich city is here. That is the natural condition that the groundwater will flow from the city and to the world to recharge to the waterworks. But recently, due to this um, contaminated uh, groundwater in the city water, so we don't want the groundwater recharge to the uh, waterworks from the city. We want to change the groundwater flow directions. What they do here that they need the recharge basins, and this is a big one. And this is a recharge basin. And they want to recharge the groundwater levels around this area to make the groundwater level, levels close here is much higher to keep that the groundwater level in, uh, to keep the groundwater flow from the city flows to another direction. And this is a control problem, but the first step they need to use the data assimilation to update the model. And uh, I won't go to the detail, just to show the result. And this is the result of the ensemble of one groundwater levels. Here it is the location. And you could say that this is uh, show uh, when the forecast of the models tell us that uh, the groundwater level here is quite low. That means you need to recharge the base or give a higher a recharge rate or recharge amount in the recharge basin to keep the groundwater levels is high enough. And uh, here, this is the shows that all the results you can visualize in this uh, uh, control centers. And uh, all these uh, uh, applications, they will start to use this uh, uh, sampling method to generate the ensembles for the parameter, the state, or the observations. So the basic way to generate the ensemble is the Gaussian sampling method. That means we will gen uh, randomly generate the samples from a Gaussian distributions. So it is clearly that the more samples you get and then the close you represent the original distribution. And here we use the Gaussian sampling to generate the distributions for the pumping rate and the, the, observa the observations error data. When it comes to the parameters, we have this uh, uh, multiple uh, multi-dimensional par parameter um, space, and we use this lighting hub cube sampling method to generate the samples for the parameters. And the, the lighting hypercube sampling, uh, sampling method tries to generate a samples evenly distributed in the whole parameter space. So here we take the examples of two parameters. And here we want to generate five samples from these two parameters. And what they do, uh, what we did by the lighting hypercube sampling, that means for each row and each column, we only generate one samples. 
So this is where we'll avoid the traditional uh, random sampling method that it will it may happen that you generate five samples, they are closed with each other and only occupied part of this um, parameter space. So this parameter, this method is really recommended in the uh, real application. And after you generate the different ensembles for the state parameters and also the input sources like the precipitation pumping rate, and each dot represented a realizations of this ensemble. When you randomly combine one set of the this data put into the numerical model and to run it, and you will generate one um, model forecast of the state. And if you run all of these realizations, so you will also get this ensemble of the model state here, which means the groundwater levels. And you could say that here the circle is much larger than before. This means that they propagate the uncertainty during this process. So the uncertainties in the model forecast is a bit larger than the than before. And then now you also have these ensembles of these observations because the observations are also not hundred percent sure. There's a bit of measurement error. So here there's also different realizations for these uh, observations. And based on this, you apply this ensemble common feature. This is what I mentioned before, these updating steps with this common gain. And you will get these new updated uh, values of the groundwater level and also the parameters. And then here, this is the, the circles. I also draw a bit smaller, that means all the uh, realizations or the ensembles of the parameters and the state, they are uh, converged to uh, true values and they are close, a bit more close with each other. That means their uncertainty is also reduced during this uh, um, data assimilation process. If you look at from this um, time axis, and here I only show an example of this groundwater level in one grid. So at the beginning, you have these three realizations for the initial conditions, and you put into the numerical model to run. So this is you get this model forecast. And uh, this is the model forecast that is propagate this uncertainty from this state into this forecast space. So the uncertainty is a bit larger. And here, this observation data you collected at the t at time t1. So based on this, and this is your new updated groundwater level data. And this data were used as the initial condition for the next time step. And then you will forward run the model again to get the forecast. And then based on the observation data to get another new update. So if we look at the emanations process is like this. So, and this is a propagation pro, uh, process. And here, this is, shows all these ensembles of this uh, realizations of the groundwater level data. So one realizations corresponding to one model runs. And you have these observations. And uh, based on the new observations, there's a whole uh, realizations of the uh, groundwater level data were close to the try to correct themselves and then close to the observation data. So you will get this updated as a distribution of the groundwater level. And this will used as initial conditions for the next time steps. And next time step, you do the same things, update and then forecast again, update and then forecast again. So this is a really um, dynamic process. So in the, uh, in the practice, we implement the ensemble common filter is that we consider about the initial conditions and the input sources, they are all in a matrix. That means here, uh, we put one initial condition and one realization of the input sources into the numerical model to get this is one, uh, uh, one realization of the model forecast. If you have so many different, or uh, so uh, large number of these, uh, realizations, and then you have to run your numerical model so many times. 
And finally, you will get these uh, ensembles of this uh, um, model forecast, like the groundwater level. And here you have these observations and consider about this uh, measure, uh, measurement error and the way when we applied the ensemble common filter updating algorithm to to the to these two part and we will get this updated uh, um, parameters and the state because here in Guantou we update the parameter and the state at the same times. So the goal of this up dating process is we try to make the updated parameters and the state to close to the real state and parameters as much as possible to improve the model accuracy. And now we look at the case studies in Guantou. And this is, a, oh, this is a bit strange. Something's wrong. And this is the geography of the hydraulic data in Guantou. So, so I don't want to go into details. This already explained in last week. And uh, here I just want to mention that the before we start to the numerical model, we still need to calibrate it, the, the numerical model. And we will use this calibrated result at the prior, uh, take the, this value at the prior information to implement the ensemble common filter in real-time models. And the numerical model, what, you, what we used here is different from the model I introduced the last Thursday. Because here we use the finite different method to develop the numerical model and in the software PM1. And the model I used the last Thursday as unstruct grids, as I mentioned before, because this unstruct method is just released when the project starts. So we want to try that to, the, to, to look at the effect of this new method. But after comparing the results from the unstruct Trees and the struct trees, we realize, we realize that the Guantau's case studies didn't gain so much from this uh, a new unstruct grid uh, method. So that's the uh, and the uh, important thing that Wolfgang is one of the developer of this PM1 software. So this software is completely free for us. So based on these two reasons in the latest uh, uh, project, and we use the PM1 to develop the numerical model. And then another thing is that the observation state, what we use to define the boundary conditions in the, in the model, what we introduced last Thursday, the data is only available until 2012. After that, we didn't get any data from it. So in order to build up a numerical model and in this project we install the new observations on the boundary until 2018 all of the observations are completely installed on the whole boundary so this uh, real-time model will start from the 2018 and um, as i mentioned before and this is uh, uh, we use the ensemble common filter to update the model. That means we need to run the model so many times. So in order to um, make our computation more effective, we try to find a simplified model to replace this hydros model result. And the, the, pumping, the, uh, the pumping rate, what we used in the numerical model is converted from this uh, electricity data. And this is also introduced by Dr. Wang in last week. And the, the, since we use this uh, struct mo uh, numerical model and we discretize the model areas into 200, 210 rows and 119 columns and it's with the grid size of 200 meter by 200 meter. And the boundary condition is also the specific specified head and it will be interpolated with the observation data close to the boundary. And the model parameters is also the hydraulic conductivity and the specific yield and all the input sources of things like the precipitation, infiltration, and irrigation backflow, canal infiltration. It is the same like what I introduced in the last week. 
and the pumping rate is a bit different because it converted from this electricity consumption data and it's based on the village level. Oh. And the initial conditions, and we interpolated from the observation data in, in the uh, February of 2018. And the simulation period is, fr is from this uh, 3rd of March, uh, the of 1st of March of 2018 to the end of 2019. And with the monthly time steps, and the details could be available for in the guidebook for this project. Oh, I think there's something wrong. I will stop the sharing because all the figures are wrong. And now we look at the, how could we simplify this um, hydros, hydros model. And um, from the result, what we introduced last week, we know that the groundwater depth in Guantou is uh, larger than 20 meters and the soil column is quite quite large. That means the water input on soil surface can't immediately recharge to the groundwater on the same day. So here the assumption what we made is that the outflow of the infiltration process of the single input on the soil surface is assumed to follow this delayed normal distribution. That means the only part of the water will input will recharge to the groundwater, and then the next time step will also part recharge part, and then reach to a maximum amount of the water input, and then decreased. So this is a follow this normal distribution, and the recharge to the groundwater, and this time step, what we uh, what we collect the recharge to the groundwater level at the time i, that mean, means the recharge is related to all the water input on the soil surface, which is happened at the previous time. So this is, means the delayed time multiplied by the weight. And the sum of all this is equals to this uh, groundwater recharge. And of course, the sum of this weight should be equals to the one because all the waters will recharge to the groundwater. And uh, after using the optimi optimized algorithms, we try to minimize the difference between the hydros uh, model and also the result from this uh, linear simplifications. And we get the optimized uh, weight, and this is a normal distribution. And here you could see that for some areas of Guantou, and it takes about five years to let the water completely to recharge to the groundwater. And this figure, this is uh, shows this uh, result from this uh, hydros model and also the result from our simplified linear model. And we could say that the simplified model could capture the dynamics of this um, result from the hydros model. They are really uh, close with each other. So we uh, here, so we think that the simplified model could go to represent the hydros model. So that means in the real time models, we didn't call the hydros model, we just call this a simplified linear model to run the real time model. And uh, after do this, and this is the result from this uh, numerical model. And here we use this uh, manual calibration uh, process. And this uh, distribution of the hydraulic conductivity and the specific yield. And this is the distribution of this uh, infiltration recharge ratio. And they are, the, the trend are similar to what we get from the, the model what I introduced the last week. And uh, this is the groundwater level fitting curves. You could say that the numerical model could capture the dynamics of the, of, of the observations but the deviations between each other still a bit larger, but we don't need to worry about it because we know that the real-time models helps us to update to the, to the true parameters and the state. So it is also a um, calibration process. But based on this uh, numerical result, we will get uh, information about the prior distribution of the parameters. Here, the parameters what we choose to update in the real-time model is all the parameters what we used to 
develop this numerical model. And this mean values, this is a result what we used from this manual calibrated result. And the distribution, all the parameters follow this log, log normal distribution. And about the di distribution of the parameters, here we assume this uh, standard deviation of the log distribution is about half of the magnitude. And uh, the, here, this is, uh, shows uh, one distribution of the parameters. Here, we use the uh, ensemble size is 50. And uh, from the other uh, researchers' res uh, res uh, result, we also realize that for a regional hydrological model, the ensemble size between 50 to 100 is good enough to keep the, to get a good uh, uh, result from the data simulation. And the error of the pumping rate here, we assume 20%, and the errors on the boundary condition and also the observations errors are both one, one meters. And all these numbers, what we have to define the uncertainty of the input sources of the distribution of the parameters are a bit subjective. So we need to do this sensitivity analysis to, to define or to determine this final number. So here, like for the parameters distributions, we try the number with half of the magnitude, one of the magnitude, and 1.5. And also for the error, we try one meter, two meter, five meters. So for the ensemble size, we also try the 50, 50 number, 100 of uh, realizations. And we compare the result, and the, this is only show this final, um, final decision or final choice. And for this ensemble uh, or data simulation, and every time Step, we need to run models for so many times because one realization corresponding to one model wrong. So the important is to understand this uh, uh, input files or the structure of the input files of the model flow. And the, all the data, the, all the data is what we use to develop the, the numerical model is stored in the name file. When you open the name file, you could see that this is all the data what we need to develop the model. And after the model forecast, we need to extract the groundwater level data from the head data. We will um, implement this uh, data assimilation algorithm. This is the ensemble common filter and to update the groundwater level and the parameters. And then for the next time steps and the updated groundwater level, will be input into this data file, this bus six data file, at an initial condition for the next step. And the updated parameters will also be updated or write into this, this data file, BCF. And for the river level and what we collected for this time step, you also need to update and the recharge data also. And because here we just do a small pre-processing at once to put the recharge minus but a minus pumping rate in one file. So th that means later we don't need to update the two files. So this is also will decrease our computation times or the reading, the time of reading and uh, extracting the, the files. And after this, and we start to do, firstly, we start to do a synthetic case. And um, this means that we randomly generate one realization of this uh, model parameters state and also the input forces like the pumping rate and put into the numerical model to let the model simply run forward. And the calculation results from the numerical model and the observations locations are the synthetic observations. That means in this case, we know the parameters and we know the observations. So we know the two systems very well. And after that, we will apply the ensemble common filter to this case and consider all the uncertainties what I mentioned in the previous slides. And here there's 50 realizations of 
the model will run and the parameters and the state will be updated monthly. And the synthetic case will tell us that how could how well could the ensemble common filter works? And this is will also help us to check that if the code what we programmed is correct or not. If this is works very good, and then we will start the, to run the real case. The real case, that means we don't use the synthetic observations. We use the real observations, what we collected from these real systems, the real aquifer systems, and to uh, update the model uh, model state and the parameters. And here, this is the result from this synthetic case. And uh, like what I said, that this observation is a synthetic. And the model is run 50 times based on this different combination of parameters, state, uh, pumping rate, uh, and so on. And this is the result of this uh, groundwater level. You could say that the distribution of the groundwater level is a bit wider at the beginning, and then with the time, it getting smaller and smaller. So that means with the assimilating more observations, uncertainty in groundwater level is reduced. And also the ensemble mean is also close to these um, two, two values. And that means we can catch up two systems with a small uncertainty. That means we are sure where is the true state. And the same trend could can also observe from these uh, parameters. And this, oh. and this you can see also the distribution of the parameters is wider at the beginning and then is converged to a uh, two values. So even though at the beginning the ensemble mean is quite different from the two values, but with the time times all the some ensembles try to converge to these two, two values and also with the smaller uncertainty. And the same trend could also observe in this uh, recharge infiltration ratio parameters. And the only difference is that the uncertainty in the infiltration recharge ratio reduced much faster than in the hydraulic conductivity. That means in this synthetic case, and the recharge infiltration are more sensitivity to are more sensitive to the observations to what we what we have. So with the observations what we have now we could uh, uh, determine the, the value of this recharge infiltration ratio. And uh, because this is a synthetic case, so everything works so perfect. And we also know that our program is no problem. So now we change the observation to the real case. So we still run the models 50 times. So we get the ensembles of the groundwater level. So from here, we can say that the ensembles of the groundwater level only could catch, capture the dynamics of the observations at the beginning of the data simulation step after that. And, um, the deviation between the observations and the ensemble is much, much larger. And even though the uncertainties in the groundwater levels is decreased with the time, but the deviation is too large. This is uh, could also observed from the parameters. Even though the uncertainties in the parameters is decreased with time, that means that they are reduced by assimilating more observations, but the distributions of the, or the the parameters, you could see that they are converged to these round numbers. And this is a log value of this specific year. For this value, we know that it can't reach to one. So it's wrong. So it should be smaller. And uh, that means the ensemble common filter didn't work well for the real case. And uh, this is quite common. This is a phenomenon could easily observed in all kinds of these real applications because here we don't know the true parameters, true state, and even the true observations. Everything is uncertainty. In order to solve these problems, there are some solutions proposed by other researchers. First is this uh, localization. Here they will introduce a cor correlation functions into the Kármán gain. So that means when during update the parameter of the state, we only 
consider about the observations which is close to that grids or that parameters. All the observations far away. So we give a smaller correlation number or even a zero. So all these things you could change for, or you could see from this correlation function. Another method is this inflation factor. This will uh, apply to the case that the error covariance matrix is underestimated. That means that the distributions of the ensemble is so small, the uncertainty is so small, that means the models are too overconfident. And in order to solve this problem, we inflated the error covariance matrix. So here the beta values is between the zero and one. When it's uh, zero, that means there's no inflation in the covariance matrix. And when it's equals to one, that means we, we inflated the distributions of the update state into the, uh, into the same magnitude of the um, forecast state. So this is will keep the distribution of the, the parameters of the state is larger enough or is wider. So the same effect could also be realized by the stamping factor gamma. And this is also a number between zero and one. So that means when the gamma is one, this is no damping effect. When it's less than one, there's a damping effect. That means during this updating uh, step and the up or the corrected magnitude is only a small, uh, it a small uh, amount is not the completely whole amount. So that means all the parameters and the state will gradually updated to the new state and the parameters. So both, both the infl uh, inflation factor and the damping factor had the effect of inflating the um, error covariance matrix. So that means we will keep the the uncertainty in parameters or state a bit larger and keeps the distribution a bit wider to give the ensemble common field a chance to filter out the true uh, parameters or the state. This will avoid the situation what we showed in the real case that all the parameters and states converge to a round number with a smaller uncertainty. All these values can't be corrected by the later uh, observations. And after compare all the results from these different solutions, the best result is to, to apply the damping factors. Here are the damping factors we choose is 0 0.1. This number, you also need to do this um, sensitivity analysis. You need to try the different uh, numbers of this damping factor to choose the best one in your applications. So here, this is also show that this uh, um, ensembles or 50 ensembles of these uh, parameters. And here, because the damping factors have the effect to inflate the, the uncertainty of the error covariance matrix, that means the uncertainty in the parameters is uh, still a bit larger than from the real cases, but with the time, the uncertainty of the parameters is reduced. And the same trend could also observe in the uh, recharge infiltration ratios. And if you look at the groundwater level distributions, you can see that this is, we could uh, um, better capture the dynamics of the observations and the accurate in the uh, groundwater level uh, improve a lot. And the result from the real-time model not only a private not only could provide the groundwater flow uh, control map, and this is the average data of this all uh, 50 uh, results. And you could see also that the groundwater level flows from the east to this uh, ground, uh, groundwater level depression zone. And uh, besides this, we can also get the standard deviation or the errors at the each grid point uh, at the each grid. And you here, if you compare to the observations map, you can see that where you have the larger error or larger standard deviation, where you lack of the observations, where you have the more observations and there the 
the errors or the uncertainties in the groundwater level is smaller. So this map will also give a hint to how to how to optimize our um, monitoring network of the groundwater level in the next steps. And all this real time re real time model result is available online. And if you use one of these three browsers to open this link, and you could see it. Sorry, I will stop share again to show this uh, result from the website. This is a shiny app. And when you open this link, you will see this interface. All the other two were uh, explained by the Dr. Li Yu tomorrow. So here you just click this real-time groundwater model and you will go to this interface. And here you could choose the time where you want to um, apply the ensemble common filter. And here, this is the result. You can see the groundwater level, standard deviation, and all the parameters. If you click the result, and you could see that this is a special distributions happened in the last time step. And the, this is also the same for the standard deviation. Every time you choose a parameter, you need to click show result. And this is also for the parameters. And you could see that the result. And if you choose this longer time step, like into 2019, this one, and you could see the same. And if you click inside, this will tell you that this uh, ensemble of parameters changing with time. So this is also a log distribution. You could say that the uncertainty is changing with time. And uh, if you change it to another parameters and you click, and this is will show the similar things. And this is also the same for the groundwater level. So if you click inside, and they will tell you that how the ensemble of the groundwater level changes with time. And this is every time step, we only show this updated number. So in order to better show this, how the real-time model works, then here we, you can click this um, ensemble demo version. This will show you how the groundwater level assimilated or updated with time. So if um, I need a smaller zoom. And if you click and you could say that this is a forecast, this is ensemble, ensemble mean the dark line. If you click again, and this is update, and then this is make another forecast. So you click again, this update forecast, update forecast. So you could say that how the groundwater level really update with the time. So if you are interested in it, and you can play by yourself. And now I will stop share again and go back to our slides to come to the final, to the summary. So here we can see that the real-time model is completely different with the conventional model. For the conventional model, we just collect the data for a specific time and then to calibrate the model. Based on that model, we will make a forecast. So normally this is a forecast where the large deviate from the true uh, reality. And for the real-time model, since we start to around the real-time model, this model will continuously to update according to the data what we collected in real-time. So the real-time model will provide the most accurate parameters and the status what we have at the moment and based on the most accurate parameter of the state and we could make a more accurate model forecast. And this is a model forecast that included not only the ensemble mean and also the uncertainty of the model forecast. So with the real-time model, the forecast will be 
were deviated from these uh, observations, but won't be that large like in the conventional models. And I also want to stress out the importance of this predictive uncertainty in the model forecast. So in the traditional or using this um, conventional model, normally we have this numerical model and without the model, we try to compare the different scenarios. This is one scenario one and scenarios two. And based on the result, we try to give some uh, instructions to the decision makers and we will see that, okay, based on this scenario one, our groundwater level in the next time will recover. And with the scenario two, the groundwater level will continues to decrease. And if we don't consider about the uncertainty, so this is our conclusion. And but if we consider about the uncertainties, so it would happen like this. For the scenario one, maybe he has a larger uncertainties. That means if we really adopt this in the future, so that means in the next step, our groundwater level either too low, that means most of the pumping wells will dry up or is too high, or the groundwater level comes to the surface. So if we consider the uncertainty, we realize that we can't adapt this uh, or apply these scenarios in the future. So we have to take this scenario too, even though the groundwater level is a bit lower than the scenario one, but the uncertainty is much smaller. So we need to take uh, scenarios with less, uh, uh, with the smaller uncertainty. So here you could really um, realize that the uncertainties that you consider in the scenarios will provide more accurate in information for the decision maker and will help you to make a rise or reasonable um, decision. So here I want to show that the available software for the real-time modeling of the ensemble common filter. If you are, don't want to program by yourself, and you can go to these uh, links to check the uh, non-commercial programs. And there's also done by the other programs in other uh, programming languages. And uh, you can check by yourself. And um, here, I just want to mention that the the Heihe real-time model, this is was done in the first phase of this project and uh, finished by our colleague, Dr. Mat uh, Dr. Betis Mati. And all the, the whole real-time model is available in the server in China, in Lanzhou University. If someone is interested, you can also go to that, uh, that, that uh, server to check how the real-time works and also the code is available on, re uh, on request. And uh, our um, real-time model for the Guantou is also available. If you are interested in it, if you want to see that the detail of the code, then you can contact with us. And this is about how to implement this ensemble command filter. And if you are also have no clue about the model flow and you are don't want to to explore that the structure of the input or, or the output files. And then you can also go to this, uh, uh, this link and all the, all the functions is programmed to read, to read or write the input files or output files from the model flow. Okay, this is all what I talked today. Thanks for your attention. Also, so sorry for the small errors uh, happened during these lectures. Sorry. <laughs>